The boat you see here is from the Mini 40 class, a one-tenth scale radio control version of a racing class popular in Europe back in the late 1980s, whose main rule was that the multi-hull should fit inside a 40-foot container for transporting between events. So this boat is 4 feet long and 4 feet wide, and a maximum sail area of 0.9 square meters. I became involved in the class in 2009 while living in Shanghai, and then started getting more interested in 2010 when I moved to Perth, and began to explore the options for getting the boat to foil. During this time I was lucky enough to meet Dave, who in days gone by had been a builder of competitive racing dinghies in Australia, and between us we started to create our own designs for the boat, and more particularly, the foils and rudder configurations. One of the challenges of the class is that being a multi-hull, we need two or three hulls, and this makes the boat expensive compared to radio-controlled monohulls of similar size, unless you have the inclination to do some of the construction work yourself. Luckily for me, Dave has developed a number of smart ideas on how to make the more critical components of the boat, using moulds, plugs, formers and cans of beer. Whilst I was living in Perth, I was okay to have a one-piece boat, but now that I'm in Manila, I needed a boat that was easy to transport, and Dave modified the design so that we can dismantle the hulls and cross beams and fit the boat into a box that enables me to take it on flights with me to different countries. This boat has a number of new features compared to our previous designs, including new hull shapes and a number of new foil designs. Our interest has always been the challenge to get the boats to foil. Whilst the idea of foiling sailing boats has been around now for a few decades, and has gained significant popularity and prominence in full-size boats, it's not so easy to apply this to RC multi-hulls, where there is no one on board to make adjustments or to shift balance on the boat to compensate for the wind strength. Other people in the class are experimenting with ways to adjust the foils while sailing, using either wands that adjust the angle of the foil according to the ride height of the boat, or using servos linked to the foils that are adjusted either through commands from the transmitter or using a gyro, as is required in RC helicopters, to automatically adjust the foil angle. We are of the view that the boat should be kept as simple as possible, and so are working on refining the V-foil concept as you see on this boat. The beauty of this system is that it is self-compensating. The faster the boat goes, the more lift is generated by the foils, and so the boat rises out of the water. But then there is less foil area in the water to create lift, and so the boat settles down lower again until it finds equilibrium. In this way it finds the correct ride height for any given boat speed. The downside to this concept is it's only giving lift, and unlike on full-size boats with crews on board who can manually adjust the foils, we cannot create neutral or negative lift from the windward foil to give us more power when sailing upwind. I've also started to make my own sails and am experimenting with lower aspect ratio rigs. Whilst not as efficient as taller, narrower rigs, they have the advantage of a lower centre of area, which helps with the stability of the boat. We still have a lot to learn about how to make the boat go fast, and it's probably fair to say that we're at the equivalent stage of RC foiling as the Wright brothers were when they got airborne in 1903. But it is tremendous fun looking for ways to improve the performance of the boat.